Hi, this is Chuck Good Samaritan Mission Jackson, Wyoming, with a little bit of word on this Wednesday. We call this Take 5 because I try to do it in less than five minutes. And we're not in a hurry, but I want to get a good portion of the Bible and put it into your heart and give you something to chew on for a little while so you'll have something in there for today. Take 5, so it's done in five minutes, so even those that are in a hurry can get a little bit of the word today. So we're in chapter 8 of the book of Mark. We're in verse 31. It's called, Jesus Predicts His Death. Then Jesus began to tell them about the Son of Man, must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed. But three days later, he would rise from the dead. He talked about this openly with his disciples. Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples, then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan. He said, you are seeing things from merely a human point of view, not from God's. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, taking up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? It is, worth, is anything worth more than your soul? If any was ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Praise God for a reading of his word, man, his blessing and his understanding as we go through it. So remember Peter just says, I say you're the Messiah. He just said that a paragraph ago. And now he's saying, and Jesus is saying, get thee behind me, Satan. Wow, what happened in that one paragraph? Well, let's say your friend said that he was going to die and he wouldn't be with you anymore. And this was a really close friend, somebody you really admire, maybe even the God of the universe. And he said, I'm going to die. Peter went up to him and said, no, this can't happen. I love you. I don't want that to happen. So he started to talk to him against him. Now, Jesus doesn't want to go to the cross. Would you want to go to the cross, especially for somebody as wicked as me? I wouldn't want to do it, especially for me. But Jesus is going to go to the cross, but he's not looking forward to it. He knows what's going to happen. He sees it already. He knows he's going to be abandoned when he takes the sin of the world upon him. He knows what it's going to cost. And Peter wasn't seeing all that stuff. And he says, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, when we don't count the cost of following God, you know, it, sometimes it costs us a lot. In the United States right now, we're kind of wishy-washy about following God. Some follow, some don't. But it's really, you're not persecuted in such a way. I, nobody's ever said, hey, if you don't reject that name of Jesus, I'm going to cut your head off. That hasn't happened in the States yet. But you can see it coming. You can see the hate that's out there for Christians. The hate that's out there for life itself. The hate that's out there for people that they want to live in a sinful way and they want it condoned by everybody else. You know, that's not what God wants. He wants us to look and see sin as sin. But he doesn't want to leave us there. He gave his life that we could be set free from that sin. You know, he was killed. He did die on that cross. But three days later, he resurrected. And that gives us hope of everlasting life with him. So today, if you're down and out and stuck in some kind of sin, maybe lust or drinking or drugging, whatever that is, you can get over it. How do you do that? You say, Jesus, come into my life. Help me overcome this, whatever it is. I give it to you right now. And you know, as he did for me, he'll do for you. And he'll set you free from whatever that is. And then when I go into the next sin that comes up in my life, guess what? He'll set me free from that too. You know, if we say we're without sin, we make God out to be a liar. So none of us are perfect. That's true. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for every one of those sins. So trust in him with your very, very life because he'll take care of it. And then you'll have everlasting life with him. This has been Chuck with a little bit of word on this Wednesday afternoon. Have a wonderful day. I'll be with you in the morning, Lord willing. Bye-bye.